you want me to record, or did you, were you still highlighting? I'm good. Okay. So last time we talked about the new education events and the new iPad, and um, I just had a few notes about some things that I was confused about or wasn't sure about last time. So the one being, does the new iPad only support the new education stylus that I can't say? <laughs> Uh, I'm just going to say it, the crown. Yeah. Uh, or does it also support the Apple Pencil? Well, hold on. What do you call the turny thing on the Apple Watch? The same thing, crown. <laughs> I know I know that it's wrong, but my mouth won't make it. I thought you were going to be like, I call it the crayon. <laughs> Something with the, I, I, I know that it's wrong. You should just switch it. You should just do the opposite. Crayon. There you go. That was close. Cray, crayon. I just stumble over it every time. But anyways, it does support the Apple Pencil. Um, it's just, it's different from the Pro because it's got the smaller screen, uh, lower refresh rate, so I'm sure that affects the Apple Pencil, hmm. how it feels, because mm-hmm. the high refresh rate is what makes it feel so fluid. Um, and then the, the Pro just has some other small features like True Tone and more speakers and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I thought that was cool that now all official lines of the iPad now support the Apple Pencil. Um, except the Mini, which they haven't updated uh, in a while. I, I Okay, can we talk about what's wrong with the Mini real quick? Sure. I ha- That's the only one I have is the Mini. Oh, you have a Mini? Yeah. Do you love it? I do. I really... So, I'm really big about it not having the camera bump. I really just love that. Yeah. And it's just a great size. I've considered, like, it fits in my, my front pocket here. The Mini does? It does, yeah. Really? Yeah, because I got my mom one, and I was like, yeah, I could use this as a cell phone. <laughs> and uh, I'm very tempted to. It'd be not the most convenient thing, but if it had Apple's like pencil support, it would maybe be worth it. Yeah, I would get it. I, I haven't updated it. I've only got, I don't know what version it is, but it's the first one that has the retina display. So it mm-hmm. doesn't have Touch ID. Um, but I would upgrade if it had pencil support, I think. I really just use it, though, for... Um, like, it'd be nice to be able to use as, like, a sketch pad. For, yeah. Like, because I do some, like, carpentry stuff and stuff like that, which I hate using paper for, but it's the only option. But I also don't need a full-size iPad. Um, I use the uh, Mini just for, it's, like, got, like, four apps on it. It's just Kindle, um, Instapaper, uh-huh. and YouTube. Okay, so it's, like, a like an enhanced ebook reader. Right, yeah, yeah. All right. That's all I use it for. I just love them. You know, you can use it for that, but they're still like they, you know, even though they're smaller, they support that multitasking stuff. And yeah, uh, like if the pencil worked with them and if Apple loved them, which it seems like Apple doesn't love them for some reason. uh, Yeah, I guess it doesn't sell, but it's a great just like consumption device, not a work device for me. So that's why I like the small size so I can easily take it places without having a huge iPad with me. Yeah, even the next size up from that is still like a relatively you know clunky ipad yeah and i don't like the look of it either the mini has like a sharp look to it yeah i would like uh i'm a big fan of the small bezels on everything i would like a smaller bezels on the ipad but i would almost want it to like shrink the ipad then make the screen larger Mm. like i'm almost even okay with a smaller ipad um but even if they went up that would be awesome and i would definitely get that too cool all right let's let's continue here on our (laughs) this basically seems like a list of things that we were uncertain about in the last episode which was most things yeah uh i already ran through most of those for the ipad though okay i have one for the ipad okay i think i got this from upgrade podcast upgrade uh and it so the thing about this is that the crayon you can take from one iPad to the next, seamlessly. Oh, okay. I don't know why. Does I don't the know how that works. Do that? It has some kind of syncing process for the pencil. Oh. And that sounds cool. Yeah. The oh. fact that you can just go, which is also nice for schools. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it sounds very important for schools because you can't expect the kids to like keep them all organized. There's got to be a speed, like a bucket of pen or yeah. bucket of these things. Um, but I did learn one more thing that we talked about last time. We were uncertain on whether or not the apple pencil stylus was replaceable like the tip of it yeah turns out that it is replaceable Hmm. i bet they haven't emphasized it though really yeah i haven't seen that anywhere it's like replaceable as in 
go to Apple and Apple replaces it, right? They don't like have them for sale in the store. Um, that I'm not sure about, about how easy it is to replace, but so where I heard that it was replaceable was just on, I think it was Cortex actually, mm. but, uh, just the way that they were talking about it made it sound like it was something you could just do, but maybe you do have to go to Apple. I'm not really positive about that. Maybe we'll have that answered on follow-up. <laughs> the, the third layer of follow-up will feature whether or not Apple, Apple dot, here, give me a second. Yeah, the, keep, the bleeding keep, question. Keep talking. I'm going to find out if it's like the tips are for sale on their website. Okay. I'll run, I'll go through this Reddit stuff. Um, so I've been doing the Reddit redesign and this will just take me a quick, a second to run through, but um, I thought it was kind of cool. So I was prompted with a survey the other day on like features that I mu- that you might want for posting on Reddit. Um, and like Reddit prompted you with that survey. Yeah. Huh? So it was, it was about the re- it was like about the redesign. Um, so I'll, I'll go through these really quickly, and then if you if you want to talk about any of them, we can do that. But um, there's like a scheduler, so like so you can schedule posts for Reddit. Um, that'd be good, I guess, for like promoting your podcast or whatever you're doing. Mm-hmm. If you want to post it the next day at a more like a better time where more people will see it or whatever. That seems like such a thing for third party. Yeah, I've seen third party things too that did that, but um, there was always like a limitation on yes. how many you could schedule. Um, I feel like that's really complicated for Reddit to do. And just so not in the spirit of it, like that seems like a marketing person feature. Yeah. And Reddit's really just supposed to be this bunch of goofballs, right? Yeah. Um, Yeah, I don't really lean one way or the other on that one. I think I rated... So basically the way that worked it is it listed all these features and let you rate rate them from one to five. Mm -hmm. That was probably like a three or something. I'd go like one or two. Yeah. Yeah, I guess you're right because that is specifically for marketing, which is Uh. kind of like frowned upon in every uh, subreddit. You're going to get a bunch of things all posting at once. Like, yeah. like somebody's going to post, like, hey, this is a good time to post. And that's going to that's gonna be, like, a post in the subreddit. Yeah. And then everyone is going to see that and be like, oh, okay. Yeah. Schedule the post for them. Yeah, I, I didn't really think too much about it. But, yeah, I think it would be pretty easily abused. No, I just think it's also a, a Reddit time, like a time sink for the developers that then will confuse the end user. Yeah. Unless they do it really well, but then it's even more of a time sink. Yeah. Uh, The next one was GIF Creator, which I never really make those, so it wouldn't be a thing for me, but I guess that's something that people might want. That was like a one or a two Mm -hmm. that I think I rated. Again, third party. I'd rather have video before I had GIF. Yeah. Like native video upload support. Yeah. They only just got images though so we'll see i was really frustrated i'm sorry i'm gonna keep taking us on tangents here but i wanted to post uh like just a recording of like me using my iphone for a thing on reddit Mm -hmm. and i was like well i guess i have to upload this to youtube yeah and what i ended up doing is i uploaded to like google drive Mm -hmm. uh and i don't think i get the preview in the reddit thumbnail thing like i don't think it'll generate that if it's in google drive which is unfortunate, and but the thing is, there's no other alternative. Like, yeah. Imgur won't do it, and uh, there used to be one called, like, uh, Vidme or something. That was, like, oh. really for, like, just short little clips and stuff. That sounds familiar. And that stopped being a thing, so it's, like, I can't, I can't even think of something. Like, I thought for a while of where to put a video clip, except for YouTube or, like, Google Drive, which is basically YouTube. Yeah. Or you could do it unlisted on YouTube if you don't want people to just find it. But Yeah, I just was like, ugh, that's so much work. I just want to, like, dump this somewhere, you know? Yeah, I don't post a lot of videos on YouTube, but I I think that's much better, like, native support um, than even... So the next one is Image Editor. I think that should definitely be, like, a third... Like, I don't really see... I don't know. I just don't want a big influx of like really bad memes. Yeah, I don't like where they're thinking here at all. There needs to be like a level of like um there there needs to be like a level of resistance between like thinking of something and posting it because otherwise Reddit's just gonna get even more flooded with I mean that's the well, image editor that's... is fine, but just why? Yeah. Uh, like does anyone use this video editing stuff in YouTube? 
you in know? YouTube? Like, oh, you can yeah. do a lot, but yeah. does anyone? I don't think so. Nobody that's doing it seriously. Yeah. Um, they also asked about polls. I think polls would be kind of cool. Because um, I like, you know, everybody likes to voice their opinion, but mm-hmm. I also like to see, like, what certain communities think. It'd also be kind of cool to, like, ask the same poll in different subreddits and see how the responses differ. Yeah. But that could also be used for, like, marketing, so... Um, I'd be curious to see how that works, but I like that one the most. It's a little weird because it like a pool is you, like if you're in a specific thread, there is like that voting option thingy, you know? Yeah. Where it like randomizes which one you see first, and like there's a whole system in Reddit for like voting on stuff. Mm-hmm. And so like a pool that is in the body of thread, I don't know. It just seems weird, and like it would kind of like conflict with the upvote system and that you mean of the thread or just in like your subreddits well it's just like reddit is upvotes right so if you're in one subreddit now instead of like upvote you just have you have another like oh yeah and that, that probably wouldn't be too concerning but they have already figured out this problem of like people voting on stuff in the threads do you, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I know what you're talking about. It'll, like, about. randomize it, and it's really weird, but yeah. it doesn't show the upvote amount. Yeah. I think that's, that's, which obviously you know this, but I think it's they're talking about something different, which would be, like, what's your favorite fruit? And then you have a list of five fruits, and yeah, everybody so. gets to vote on it, but then you have to also vote on whether or not you, yeah. up or down, on whether or not you uh, like that poll. I'm just thinking of Facebook polls. Yeah. And they're okay. It's been really popular, because Facebook, Instagram, Twitter... They all have polls that are used pretty often. Does Instagram have polls? Uh, Instagram stories do, kind of. You can like choose one or the other, and then it'll show you the percentage of people that voted on the other one. Oh my gosh, you I've never seen, seen one of those, no. Yeah, so you can say, like, you know, I don't know. You can do a poll where people can choose, but you only get two options. On the topic, very briefly, of uh, Instagram stories, mm-hmm. you can now turn on notifications for stories. Really? Yeah, which is like... For, like, specific people, I assume, not for just all stories. Oh, no, yeah, for okay. individuals. Because, so, for forever, you could turn on notifications for Instagram. So that if someone posted a photo, like Instagram originally was for, you got yeah. a notification about that. And I don't even think it worked that great, because half the time I don't think I would get it. Uh, but now they also have, like, there's an additional option that says turn on story notifications, which is big for me, because... Uh, you know, Snapchat has never had this. You can't do like a story notification, which yeah. you'd think that Snapchat would do because it's in their interest too. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, I really haven't ever gotten into Snapchat. And uh, then I had some people, you know, on, on Instagram that I'm like, man, I wish I could see these stories as they come in. Because the thing is, if you miss one, it's just gone forever. Yeah. So it seems like notifications are especially useful for this kind of situation and Instagram has finally implemented it and Snapchat still doesn't have it. So, yeah, I don't have notifications on for Instagram, but I, I noticed this thing now that you can like save your stories to your profile. I've never done it and I'm sorry, mm. I don't know a lot about it, but like, I guess if you have a really awesome day, you can save it to your profile so that it's there either longer or forever or something. Hmm. It, it like shows up on like above your like image list. Like the other people can see me. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, so that kind of looks like that, like so you can you catch the really cool stuff, I guess. But um, it's just they're the one fleeting thing, and they never had notifications, but they do now. So yeah, or at least Instagrams. Um, another one is drafts. So I guess just like saving a post to finish later, which makes sense. Some people mm-hmm. post like basically novels sometimes, like super long posts. So it'd be. For those kind of posters, I could see why something like that would be helpful. And that might also be like a workaround solution for the scheduler without it being such mm-hmm. a specific yeah. mint for just marketing at a certain time kind of thing, but saving it until in your drafts until you're ready to send it. So I think that'd yeah. be a good alternative to, to the scheduler. I think a lot of people have benefited from Twitter drafts. I almost yeah. never use it. Uh, but you know, some people have like just this backlog of things that they build up and really get into that. And then I just don't touch it. So it doesn't bother me. Yeah. Um, I don't post a lot on Twitter, but I, I always hear about like comedians will have like a whole list of 
Twitter drafts, and sometimes yeah. I'll like post one that they didn't that they like found or something. That yeah, I think is funny sometimes. Just like from my drafts, and you know, it doesn't hurt. Like I, I don't even know how I would do that. I mean, I think I could find it if I wanted to save a draft, but I don't. Yeah. I, I don't see it in my course of like tweeting, so it's out of the way enough for Twitter. Yeah, so I could see it on Reddit. Um, looping video. Um, that seems like the kind of boring one, but that's that. And then meme maker, which kind of goes back to the image editor of like, I don't want people, I don't know. It just seems like a little bit of resistance is good so that people have to like kind of know what they're doing to be able to actually post something. It's a weird list. Yeah. (sighs) Meme maker. Meme maker. (sighs) But I like, uh, polls and drafts the most. Uh, the rest are kind of like, uh, whatever. The loop thing. Uh, it just seems so trivial and I've never like, like watched something and like oh I wish this looped <laughs> like well, when like, they do loop it's funny but it's usually for comedic effect there's like the like better every time and like perfect I think it's called perfect loop or something it's a subreddit oh, where yeah. you know I, it goes yeah. continually but it's gifts <laughs> yeah and then there's I think it's called better every loop or something I don't know, but yeah, I get what you mean. You know what I would like to see, and I don't know if one of those things was intended to be what I'm about to say. I would like to give it a video, and ra- like first of all, give it a video <laughs> and have native like upload support of video. That'd be great. But if I choose to take that video and then just click a little button and it turns it into a GIF for me, because GIFs are pretty like popular mm-hmm. and useful on Reddit, that would be fantastic. Well, yeah, the second one is GIF creator. Oh, I just so I would assume that's what that would be is you give it a video and oh. snip out five seconds okay whatever. i didn't know what that meant but if it does that then yes does youtube still do that they did that natively on youtube for a little while gif creation yeah what could you how do you get the gif it was like in the share area you would click it and then you would select like on the timeline what you wanted to turn into the gif and then it would give you a link for it but then it's not on youtube you just get a link and you can put the gift other places yeah it's been a like i i have done it before i forget the specifics about like huh. where the image ended up being hosted but uh they, there was something like that i had to know of. Hmm. Yeah, yeah well um yeah that's all that that was um did you find the apple pencil thing i did yeah fun fact you can get a four pack of apple pencil tips for just 19 dollars Five dollars a tip. Yeah, so they are replaceable. It's not that bad of a price. It's kind of annoying that you got to buy four. So it looks like it like it has like a little like channel. Yeah. For like a friction fit, it looks like. So I guess you just pull it out and push it in. That's the. I wish I understood how the pencil works because something's going on, you know, to get the pressure and the angle. Well, the angle is just the angle of the pencil, but like I'm not sure how pressure works. Yeah. And apparently this tip is removable, which means that there's probably not electronics in there. I don't know. Yeah. Well, there could be like a pressure pad without it being like moving at all. Yeah. Which I would like something removable. Just like a, like depending on the like stress on the tip, it, it just has different resistance that's measured by the, the pencil or something. Yeah, I don't know. It's speculation, know. and I'm pretty sure out there somewhere someone knows. Yeah, so we'll leave it at that. <laughs> but yeah, we've at least figured out that it's we've solved the mystery of you just kind of put it in there. Yeah. All right, that's all I had for uh, follow up. Uh, the rest of the stuff on the that I have under follow up are actually just I think new topics at this point mm. because we're going to be talking about SpaceX and the Boring Company and stuff like that a lot. So. If we can't make every single topic on Boring Company uh, follow up. Okay. Um, but I saw an article. Um, there's not a lot of information about it that I saw for a Boring Company, but basically um, an initiative. Um, Elon Musk tweeted about um, just using materials from digging the holes to create bricks. So part of the tweet was life size Lego like interlocking bricks made from tunneling rock that you can use to create sculptures and buildings rated for California seismic loads. So super strong, but bored in the middle, like an aircraft wing, uh, but not so heavy. So I thought that was kind of cool. Just like, um, you know, 
reusing kind of recycling of the, mm-hmm. all the stuff that he's doing. He, there were there were no like uh, mock-ups or like what it would look like or anything, but it sounds like it'd be an additional process um, after the boring that would also create materials like bricks. Yeah. The only comment I have here is that, so for a while in the FAQ on the Boring Company website, they didn't really like specifically say like we're going to make bricks and sell this. But, like, one of the questions was, like, what about the loose dirt that you dig up? Yeah. And it said something like, oh, we can turn these into bricks or something. Okay. Uh, so it's it's not a brand new surprise, but the fact that it might be sold in a Lego-like, you know, yeah. fun way. <laughs> or, you know, I don't really know, actually. Maybe these are going to be somewhat used for, like, relief efforts and humanitarian things, possibly. Yeah, he didn't get too specific. He just says life size Lego like block, Lego like bricks, and then for creating sculptures and buildings. So I assume they would sell them to do whatever people want to use them for. Yeah. But like, like he didn't say what they would look like or anything like that. Um, One of the top rated. Uh, uh, well, I don't know if it, it might have just been at the time I looked, but on r slash entrepreneurship or just entre- entrepreneur. Uh, there was a guy who built a business around just making little finger sized like cinder blocks and you could just build little structures with those and oh, they really? come on little pallets and things. Oh, that's pretty funny. So this is like a big version of those, yeah. which normally would just be cinder blocks, but I guess cause we're making them out of the earth that the boring company digs up that it's kind of more fun too. Yeah. That's funny. Um, and then did you see the yeah, I didn't know that that was already a thing so I just saw that he, I just saw that he tweeted that and thought that was interesting. Yeah, no, it's it's definitely news. Um but did you see the SpaceX uh remove debris thing? Yes. So I thought that was really cool too because that's obviously been an issue people talk about every time a new launch goes up which is like every other day at this point. Um which, you know, they, it's like there's tons and basically what the issue is is that in space there's like tons of just loose debris that's up there not doing anything. Pieces like um, satellites that no longer work, um, rocket boosters, and just like little pieces of other things. So the stat that I have here is uh, 500,000 defunct satellites, rocket boosters, and other things flying around the Earth. And um, they're going super fast. There are pieces that go up to like 8 miles per second. And uh, in 2015, there was even one that was heading towards the ISS that they had to, like, race for um, in case it ended up hitting them. So Mm -hmm. apparently that's been an issue. And uh, SpaceX launched this thing that they called Remove Debris that does basically two extraction types for getting loose debris out of the atmosphere, out of the um, orbiting the atmosphere. Uh, One of them shoots like a little net at it and then pulls it back. There was like a whole animation that they made, too, which was pretty cool. And the other one's more of like a harpoon. So I would assume the net is for like smaller things and harpoon is, I would guess, for larger things. But it basically shoots out and brings it back. And then it opens a big sail that drags it back, back to the earth and basically just burns everything up. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I, that's, I've like heard about different things like that, that. Like I've heard about NASA trying to create things to remove this issue, but I haven't actually seen anything um, being launched. Yeah, it's good to see them embracing something like this because it jives really well with their actual like core mission, which is, like, I think sometimes it gets lost. Elon says it a lot, but people get absorbed in the, like, Mars is cool, let's go to Mars thing. And, like, from the beginning get-go, he has been about, like, making sure there's a backup of life on Mars. Yeah. And then this satellite kind of debris-clearing technology is to alleviate the nut like another possibility of uh you know what could end life on the planet so i don't know if you're familiar it's called kessler syndrome yeah yeah and so that's this is kind of the extreme end of this satellite junk thing where you can't even leave the planet because there's so much junk whizzing by you know unfathomable speeds yeah and i think the fear is like right now it's obviously you know not an immediate danger but it's something we should be thinking about and fixing but i guess the fear is eventually when there's so much once something like crashes into something else 
then maybe that's split into like 50 more pieces and then now you've like yeah. increased your chance of it hitting something else and then you, once you do that over and over and over again it's kind of something that like spurs out of control yeah um, snowball effect and part of it too is i think you know i kind of try to imagine this in my head and maybe you know this would be not like like an impossible like if you tried to get through it in like just a spacesuit maybe you could but like kind of a more fundamental problem is like if you want to start to build a space infrastructure and like uh just like civilization in space and kind of expand out it's really difficult to do that on like an industrial practical s scale you know like it's, yeah. it might still be plenty possible to get one spaceship through but it's the fact that if you have enough junk that it makes it hard to get like a large space station to remain aloft right. without being, you know, just you know, punctured by little debris pieces. Yeah. Well, like when we're thinking about like the BFR and transporting people in low, low earth orbit to yeah. like the other side of the world, or maybe if eventually there's um, like consumer travel to the moon or to Mars, we don't want there to like, Oh, but like we've, we figured out the transportation piece, but there's like a higher <laughs> chance that we're going to get hit by an old satellite. That's a good point because, like, BFR is, uh, you know, one of its kind of design characteristics is that it hangs out in low Earth orbit getting refueled for a while. Yeah. Like, possibly like weeks or something. And if you don't have the ability to do that because you've polluted your low Earth orbit, then that whole infrastructure kind of falls apart. Yeah. Um, so I'm sure there are other projects going on. I haven't done a ton of research into what other research or, like, tests or, like, options there are for that but um i thought that that was cool um and then the last thing i have on my list is um pokemon go mm. so um this again is pretty short but pokemon go is having like an earth day for basically picking up um like cleaning up your city it's like ho it's hosted by local nonprofits like all around the world it'll be a two-day okay. event uh, basically people cleaning up and picking up trash and stuff for Earth Day. Um, and then there's rewards. So it says if 1,500 people participate, I'm pretty sure, it's uh, double Stardust for all ground, water, and grass-type Pokemon. Um, and if 3,000 people participate, it's uh, three times. So hmm. I thought that was like, kind of a cool thing, and it fits in perfect with what Pokemon Go is doing. So it's a good marketing thing. Yeah. Um, it's just like a good social thing. Um, and in they're like giving like i mean they're nonsense like they're rewards that cost them nothing but um they're it's using them using their platform for something pretty cool i think so is the i don't actually fully get it would you just get together with other people and help clean up and you're not using the app at all in this time no they didn't explain how the actual thing would work um it could be Maybe partnering with a local nonprofit and you, they like give you like a QR code or something to scan to prove that you've participated. Or maybe it's like you take a picture of the trash when you pick it up. Mm. I, I, they didn't explain how it would work exactly. But, but there's not some kind of like AR component. Like... Not that I, not that they've mentioned it. And I, I don't <laughs> think so. <laughs> like it's, it's not probably... integrated to gameplay, right? This is just. No, it's just yeah. like if you participate, there are gameplay rewards, okay. but it's not part yeah. of the game. Just like all the Pokemon become trash instead. and Right, yeah. <laughs> go. We gotta catch like a water bottle. Should we get into the Reddit April Fools? Yeah. I'll let you take this one. Okay. So, oh, it's such a topic. So for April Fools, this is the third year in a row that, a or that uh, Reddit has done something of interest, especially. So the first year they did the button and it was this like kind of gimmick it's all it's all sort of around like game theory and like how people play with this simple mechanic you know with like multiple players which are all the reddit accounts so the button uh was this mechanic where it would count down and whoever pressed it reset it and then they it, like you got a certain flare if you pressed it closer to zero um uh, so it was a whole fun thing and then last year they did r slash place which was Kind of like every so often, each Reddit account is allowed to place a tile on this grid, and it ended up in multiple colors, so you created like pictures and paintings. Uh, so that's that's kind of the premise. And then this year, on April 2nd, as I understand it, because 
just they needed more time or the employees weren't in the office. Uh, I thought it was like all part of the gimmick and somehow like they're, they're, the joke was that they were actually doing it on April 2nd or something. But I think there were real reasons. Um, but so this year they did what's called Circle of Trust, r slash Circle of Trust. And that basically means so everyone is able to claim a circle with the Reddit account that they have. Uh, so there's just a little button and then you can set a password for it. And then once you have created your circle and you have your password, you can give people that password to invite them to the circle. Uh, but when you when they enter the password to join the circle, they also have the option to betray the circle. And so then if you betray the circle, the circle dies and it's just dead and no one else can join. And it, it had whatever number of members it had is like its score. Uh, but for each person that joins, you get a new point. And then it's kind of a competition to see who can grow their circle the largest. Yeah. And then there were like flares saying how many circles you were a part of and whether or not you've betrayed a circle. So other people had information on you about whether or not you've betrayed circles, other circles or not. So there was right. some strategy there um, as far as that goes. So so did you end up – so I, I played for like an hour – like trying to get people to join my circle and then I kind of got bored of it and moved on. But yeah, um, did you get anywhere? No. So this one was my least favorite first because it was shut down. Like it was April 2nd when they actually implemented it, but then it also like went offline at least once, maybe more. Um, and I just think it was like a little complicated and they, they didn't really work out all the bugs on this one. Yeah. Uh, so that's part of like kind of why I wasn't as into this one, but then also, I don't know if I agree with this one as much because so the mechanic is that you give out a password, right? Mm -hmm. And then there's flares to see if people betrayed you, but like anyone that you've given that password to, they can go use their alt account and then they can betray you with that because they just have a password. Yeah. They can post in the comments. They can post somewhere else in Reddit altogether. You know, anyone, the, the flare system wasn't great because you don't actually know who's betrayed you and they could just post out the password or use an alt account. Yeah. I did think that it was interesting, but they did a very bad job of communicating even how it worked because like yeah. there was, I, I assume that Google doc, so you sent me a Google doc on like the rules, but it sounded like that was like a community created yeah. thing because yeah. it was just in a Google doc and it was being updated. Yeah. The only reason I know how this works at all is because there was one post on the like meta subreddit about the game that kind of explained it in like a paragraph and it wasn't a, a mod. It was just, or well, it wasn't a Reddit employee. It was just some person. Yeah. And then that Google doc kind of helped too. Yeah. But maybe that was the point. I don't know. Yeah, that's true. Um, I had six people in my circle and it didn't end up getting betrayed in it, but then I just ended up stopping. Mm. But my strategy was, I basically just like went to the new and commented to everybody saying like, uh, if you like, give me your password and then I'll give you mine. And if you join mine without betraying me and then I'll join yours without betraying you. But if you betray mm -hmm. me, then I'll betray yours. So it was kind of like, um, like you have to give me your password first, but I'm not joining yours until after you've successfully and safely yeah. joined mine because you can't go back and then betray. But there's, there's but then a, there's the, like you said, so you can do it all counts, yeah. which I didn't check. But it would be kind of lazy of them to not have a time ban on it. But even if you, like a, a new account thing. It was if, so you had to have the account existing before, I think, April 1st. Okay. But even then, people have multiple accounts yeah, um, all the time. But you yeah. just had to kind of like hope people stayed within the spirit of the game. And, yeah. But I don't know. What was kind of interesting is that, see, and this wasn't conveyed and it's like you only get to make one circle. Like it says that to you. But it doesn't say like what the circle does or anything. So I created my first circle with a very limited understanding. And I didn't understand. So you create the circle. You can't change the name from then on. You can't change the password. And the password makes sense, right? It's locked in stone. But the name ends up being like all the circles get featured on one subreddit. Yeah. That's like no one can post on it. It's just automated that the top circle is like at the top of the subreddit. So the upvotes are replaced by the number of people in the circle. Yeah. Um, and so what, what ends up playing into it is like the name of the circle can actually be really helpful for you. Yeah. I don't think many of the high score circles did have names that were really like, 
instructional. Yeah. But there's like there's some potential there. Yeah, I could have put my roles in my name. Yeah. I would have known, but exactly. And like the password even can be some kind of phrase. Like some of the some of the things were like the title was Morse code, and then oh, okay. the password was like whatever that thing was in word form. So there's some clever fun to be had. I think there's about like a thousand other ways that these like the gist of this game could still be there, but that you yeah. could have reworked it to be, I think, more interesting. Yeah. I really like these game theory kind of things though. Yeah. Even outside of what we're actually doing. Last year the the, the place thing was probably my favorite they mm -hmm. did. I like how Reddit does it more than everybody else. I don't even get on the internet, really. That's why I didn't even know that it existed until you told me, because I cannot stand to get on, like, Twitter or yeah. uh, Reddit or even, like, YouTube on <laughs> April Fool's Day, because everything it's, is ruined. It's just the the day off. And there's, like, one good thing out of a sea of garbage. Yeah. Uh, I, still have, uh, I still have Waldo, or Waldo looking at me on Google Maps. Looking at me. Like, it was, Google Maps' thing was that, where's Waldo? Is there something? And, like, he's still looking at me. Oh, <laughs> and yeah. it's April 6th or 5th. Oh. <laughs> so I don't know how to get rid of that. And it's actually really annoying. Like, I'm driving here, Waldo. I need to look and see what Cars Against Humanity did this year, because they always do something funny, too. So do you know about the things that they've done? <sighs> What'd they do? So, they're... Uh, I'm not prepared for this at all. <laughs> but the first one that I'm thinking of is just like they had one that I forget what it was called, but it was like just digging a hole. So like people would donate money to just dig this huge hole, and they were like, "Why are you doing this?" And it's just like just because we're digging a hole, <laughs> and it didn't it served no purpose. Another one was like buying air, so um, people would yeah. like people paid five dollars to buy air, uh, which is was just an empty box. Yeah. I can it's a fun company. I don't really like the game. I don't get into it that much. But I love the, the goofy things that they do. Yeah. Two of the ones that come to mind thinking about this is one, most recently they attempted to buy some like priceless work of art and shred it up and give each person a piece. Did oh, you see that? No, I didn't see that. And I think like some art societies were not happy and that they didn't end up doing it. But they really? were... I can't imagine them backing <laughs> down. Because they did the wall thing. So do you know about that one? What was the wall? So basically they did a thing where people could buy $5 of a share or something. And they would buy a plot of land on the border of Mexico. So that if Trump tried to build a wall, <laughs> he would have to do legal suits against everybody that paid the $5 towards that plot of land. And the money went towards <laughs> paying for lawyers to represent them. Why, why would there be a legal suit? Because you owned a plot of Mexican land? Uh, no, U.S. land, like, along the border. Oh, oh. Yeah. Oh, just, like, divide it as much as possible. Right. Clever, clever. Yeah. And then the, the one one other one that they had real quick was a Super Bowl commercial. Did you see that? Uh, no, I didn't see that. <laughs> so they, they did not actually get a Super Bowl commercial, but they kind of took advantage of the fact that no one is super sure, like, because there's regional commercials and, like... You know, you don't know if you missed one. So they claimed that they had a Super Bowl commercial that was really abstract. So it was just like a picture of a potato. Okay, I do you know that potato one. Yeah. But like, they claimed there was a Super Bowl commercial, but there was not. Okay. I thought that was a Super Bowl commercial. Cause it, but it was like, it was just a potato that had advertisement written on it, right? Something like that, yeah. But it was like not branded by them no, at all. No, it didn't have their branding at all. But there was no real commercial that ran. So <laughs> they got like all the perks of it yeah. without any of the, the costs. That's funny. Um, so, I, so on on the circle though, I still have mine. I think. Oh. And uh, I don't know if this game ever ends. So maybe I'll play the long con here, <laughs> <laughs> just you know, years down the road. That that would be interesting, actually, if this just doesn't have an end date. Yeah, it'd be a weird thing for them to have to work around forever, but. Well, because there was some question on when the button ended, which took forever. It was like months. But that was like mm. users decided it directly when it hit zero. Uh, but for like place, I think it was just an arbitrary cutoff. And then it was just locked in forever. And uh, so I don't know if this circle thing, it has to be somewhat long term. Yeah, I guess so. I'm trying to see. So there are still... 
Out of uh, 109,000 sub subscribers, 13,000 are online. So actually, I'm confused by that now. So does online mean just on Reddit or in the actual subreddit? Mm. Yeah, I don't know. Well, either way, if it's if it's on the actual subreddit, that means like you know, fifteen percent um, of the people are still browsing it. But um, this could be, you know, like if Reddit doesn't shut it down, this could be seven years from now. Like this, unlike the button, this isn't really dependent on and our place really because our place if everyone left it you know some group would come in and make all kinds of things so it was a constant defense and things this yeah. is the first one that i think everyone could walk away from and walk back to whenever yeah and, it'd be, and it's still going it'd be really cool if they like cut off like new which i guess they did but new accounts no new accounts can play and then you're yeah. playing the game of like who's the last man standing which obviously there'll be lots of dead accounts, but like it'd be cool to see in like ten years, like oh <laughs> now we're whittled down from like when we did have a hundred thousand people, and now only like five hundred people still have actual circles. Yeah, and I well I just wish I thought for a while that you could betray the circle even after joining it, like like my passcode is something like. By typing this, I agree not to betray the circle, <laughs> which is completely stupid because after that I learned how it works. And like, y I thought you like automatically were joining the circle, like you joined it no matter what, and then you had the option to betray. Mm -hmm. um, I see. It wasn't like a, an option either or. It's like you're a part of the circle until you betray. Yeah, well, and like I was kind of looking on Reddit and there was like a specific discussion about sort of how this could have been better. And one was, that if the creator of the circle was the only one that could invite people, well, that's not even necessarily the case. Just, but the key of it is an invitation system, right? So yeah. like you type in on some part of your Reddit account, the name of a user, and then that user gets a little accept or um, betray button. Cause then that user wouldn't have a password to go take to their alt account or to just post wherever. It would oh. just be, and then if they betrayed it, like, then you flare them as betrayed, and it would be very accurate. That would um, be much better. Yeah. And so, you could also have it that anyone in the circle would be able to invite anyone to any circle, you know? Or yeah. you could have it just be the host. So these are all these mechanisms that I, I really want to take some time and think, even going back to, like, the button, but mostly this one, just how could this have been different and more interesting? And I almost feel like you could create like a social network just on this concept if you refined it a little. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to propose something. Do we trust... So this is a brand new podcast where we have basically no listeners, but do we trust our no listeners enough to post our circle with the password in the description well, of you, this episode? Your circle is betrayed, right? No. Oh, I thought you said it got betrayed. No, it hasn't been. So I have seven oh, people. Oh. So I'm, I'm looking at it now. I have seven people in it. Um, not Not betrayed. And I haven't betrayed. But the thing is, so like if you come back in years, you know, anybody in that time could betray your circle because they know the thing, right? Or could pass off the information such that someone else could betray it. Oh, you're saying anybody that I've already given the password to could betray it? Yeah, yeah. So it's, there is, I guess, a time component here because years down the road, everyone that's in your circle has the ability to make it betrayed by yeah. sharing that thing. Oh. Yeah, I hope somebody's not committed enough to like betray a circle from some random person on Reddit. <laughs> but uh, you put it in there though. Yeah, you know what I think the button would be really good for. Kind of yeah. like basically take that exact idea and make it like for charity donations or something. Like, so every time you click, I don't know, I haven't thought through the mechanism exactly, but it'd be like every time you click the button, it's sort of like it costs you a penny or something. Um, mm. or basically like you raise money at a steady rate for as long as the button is clicked. And so then you, you have to share the button, your specific button. So if you're like Red Cross, Red Cross is tweeting out like, here's the link, go click on our button is like, we get $5 a day for as long as this button doesn't mm. hit zero, you know? Yeah. That's a cool idea. Yeah. Yeah. There's something there. Something like that. And you, you could do a lot more too. Yeah, that'd be really cool. I'm trying to think through it now. That could be your pitch idea. Yeah. 
Uh, well, uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, it, that's nice because people then need to promote the hell out of this thing that you're offering. Mm-hmm. Maybe we should just, you know, just make this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Two yeah. years late, but... <laughs> That'd be for that'd be pretty simple. I, yeah, it'd be not hard. It'd be really cool. Like, you'd have to. So, where does this money come from? Is the question, right? Like, Red Cross would start a campaign. They'd have to like find people that would commit. Yeah, but, but I think it'd be pretty easy to find somebody to sponsor that because if we can guarantee that somebody's going to visit this web page at least every five seconds or something. Oh yeah. Somebody will oh, pay like to put a different their logo com- on like there. A, like, yeah. Yeah. So like Pepsi or We're whatever doing it. is like We're doing it. We'll give you a thousand dollars for every minute you can keep people on this page. Right. We whatever. gotta we, we gotta have this implemented before this podcast goes off. It yeah. could even be like a Patreon alternative. Yeah. We have to find somebody to support. Yeah. Um, so do we want to get into that, the pitch? So basically what we were wanting to talk about this episode Yeah, look at that transition. Is like a pitch um for just a random business or not even random, maybe something you've been thinking about um, to the other person. Um, so I guess I'll go first. Okay. Uh, let me pull up my notes here. All hmm. right. So this one is very practical thing. So mm-hmm. but I, in my Evernote, I have a list, I have a notebook for ideas and there's like a ton of things in there. Most of them are garbage. Um, but this is one that I think needs to actually exist and it's a very practical and very, uh, you know, useful thing. So basically it's for, um, during like election season. So during election season, there are always, there are tons of candidates for different positions and like, it's really hard to find where everybody stands on specific, you know, issues. Mm -hmm. So... Like for example, the last election, um, I'm looking at the at the ballot, and um, there are, you know, I can't find any information on half the people on the ballot. So these like, why is there not like a basically a place for a resume for people running for office where they're basically submitting their resume to us, the people voting for them, mm-hmm. to say like this is officially my stance on this issue. This is my officially my stance on this issue, and. Um, like it's a single place owned by the government that you can go to mm-hmm. and, and kind of see who's running and it'd be like you could add features to it like um like remove uh like party affiliation um filtering you fill out maybe your own like where you stand on each issue and okay. it shows you like the 10 people or whatever that agree most of most with you um telling you when voting is in your area like i feel like the whole system is like whether or not it's on purpose, mm-hmm. like encourages ignorance because it's so hard to find anything. I really like the resume analogy there. That is yeah. a good way to frame it. Uh, so the one thing you have to do is make these people do it is challenge. Yeah. But then I think it'd be very useful. Well, I, like, I don't even think you need to like make people, like it doesn't need to be a requirement. Oh, you mean make the people, candidates, the candidates. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But that should be pretty simple like if you're nominated and if we're spending the time to like put you on a ticket like okay you need to fill out this thing before we officially put you on a ticket which yeah. is basically just a quick form that says your stance on different issues yeah, you don't even have to say whether or not it's like maybe maybe it's like a agree to disagree scale or something like that is yeah. mandatory and then if you want to elaborate you can and they'll put whatever you uh, want to put but, you're gonna run in politics though because you've got a you know, the Republican Party is going to have to agree to that. Yeah. But I think, I think if you could play somehow, like, make it seem like, well, the Democrats are doing it. Why aren't you doing it, Republicans? Like, if you could somehow do that, maybe it, yeah. it'd have a good... It needs to be something that, like, whoever is in power during a certain time needs to implement to be just, like, yeah. law. Because, I don't know, it just seems crazy to me that, like, researching different candidates, I couldn't find... They're, they're like running for office and I'm able to vote for them, but like I can't find anything about them. Yeah. What well, would be an interesting extension of that is if, uh, in addition to candidates submitting a resume, like as a voter, you can just do exactly, like basically fill out the thing exactly as the candidates did, like the same form or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then here's where it's tricky, but somehow an algorithm thing would happen. Yeah. And it would just spit back at you like, 
you want this person to win. <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> that's basically, so that was, yeah, that's what I would basically want it to do. Because, so what I did was, for the last election, basically, I found, like, all the main issues. I made a spreadsheet. Mm. And I all the people running for each um, position or whatever, um, whether or not they, they agreed, neutral, or disagreed on that issue, and then I filled out mine and basically, like, through a weighted scale, decided the person that I was going to vote for. Mm. So that's how I did it, and just through, like, a quick sort of algorithm built in that's a, really good a spreadsheet. Yeah. Um, and, like, if this – like, this will be a big political thing, so maybe they don't want to directly – recommend one person so it could just be like these are the five people you agree with the most we're not going to tell you in what order mm. but these are the people you should probably be thinking about and then make them research mm -hmm. more into each of those people but i don't know like the way the system works now like i said encourages ignorance because it's so hard to find where people stand on different issues and what that does is force people to rely more on marketing to choose who they're going to vote for Whereas, like, I shouldn't be voting for who I want to be, you know, president or senator or whatever based on how good their marketing campaign was. Yeah, I think so. Part of the problem here that this could even more address is so, like, I kind of had an idea for this most recent election on the presidential candidates. Um, but and actually, it's been a while, so I don't even totally remember how this works. But when you vote for president, there are some other voting people on that ballot thingy right like yeah. you pick state stuff or something i don't know yeah, and that's the stuff that i can't find yeah. any information on yeah people. and the problem there is i think that because literally no other information exists there's just vaguely name recognition and if you don't recognize a name like from some campaign of theirs or whatever which i really didn't for the most part then at that point the only thing that you're going to vote based on is like how much you like their name. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so you've got a, like a, an advantage to people with cool or appealing names. Yeah. and they, Or you're voting for who's first on the ballot. Or you're yeah. voting for like oh, do they, anything but the issues. I would, do they randomize it at least? No. They don't even like mix up the name? Or, Not as or, far as I know. I don't know. I don't think that they do. Which is just, that's a whole argument for why this needs to even be digital. But that's uh, a whole different thing. Uh, but like I think... A bigger, more solvable problem is just the information problem. Like, make yeah. it easy for, for people to find information on them in a way that's reliable and bipartisan and not like, oh, I went to, like, this website that I found. But what the website doesn't say is that, like, you know, it's left-leaning or it's right-leaning or it's, you know, incomplete information on this thing or maybe not all the way up to date. You, you, know, don't, you don't know. Standardized. Yeah, it needs form. to be something that's, like, this is current, and both parties agree that this is the way to do it. Oh, but you, you misunderstand politics, though, Gil. <laughs> like, I know. For I'm them to be a su successful politician, they have to be both on one side and the other side of the issue in some kind of quantum situation. No, yeah, it's just going to be neutral all the <laughs> way down for every issue. But, I don't know. Maybe that's not the perfect solution, but it's very frustrating having to like vote for somebody and not... Like, I just didn't even vote for half of the things because I couldn't find anything. The people? Or what do you mean? Like, for uh, half of the, um, like, I can't think of the word right now, but whatever their, like, elected office or whatever like positions. would be. Yeah. yeah so. If there were, like, three people running, oh. I couldn't find any information on two of them. I would just say, okay, well, I'm not even voting then on that, mm -hmm. on that office because... I don't know anything about oh, the running. See. Right. Yeah. So you can, that's you can my be thing. like me and be surprised that there are other people to vote for <laughs> besides president when you get to the booth. Well, that's another <laughs> thing is that like, you can look up what the ballot looks like before you go in, but like they don't make it easy for people to find that. Like yeah. everything's so difficult to find and everything's so reliant on the last commercial you saw oh, or man. who your dad voted for or who your neighbor has a sign for in their front yard. I'll tell you. I have never felt less cool than when I voted, right? Like, you'd go to the municipal building, and yeah. there's all these old ladies, and they're, like, giving you a sticker. Ah, oh, I was talking, I think, with my girlfriend recently. I was just like, can I just, can I create a voting station 
and it's going to be badass. I'm going to have like, <laughs> it's going to be basically yeah. uh, Coachella, but with a voting booth. Yeah, when you put the thing, <laughs> it, when, you, when you submit it, a firework goes off. Yeah. I don't actually know whether I could do that or not, but I really want to. <laughs> Dude, I think it's got to be a certain building, but you could still snaz those up a little bit. Yeah. But yeah, it just needs to all be online. So the blockchain needs to first solve identity and then solve um, voting. We're getting there. And then um, everything is nice and secure and accurate. Okay. So that's enough treading the line of politics uh, with go to your pitch. Okay. I have a couple. I have a couple, Gil. Oh, yeah. I also want to say just election.gov does not exist. So that that would be the that'd be the domain for it. <laughs> <laughs> Quick register. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay. Uh, can I can I do three that are really short? Sure. Three that are really short because I just I have ideas, man. They're my thing. Okay. Idea number one. We'll start goofy. Is a fake twenty three and Me service, like DNA matching oh, yeah. service. So it's like a prank basically okay and so it people give these as gifts a lot you buy one you give it to your friend it looks very legitimate like a box and it's like you know spit in this or pee in this (laughs) or whatever (laughs) i don't know what they do (laughs) uh and then you send it in and from the perspective of the person that has received this gift would that be what the copy read like if somebody sends you a box and you just says spit and pee in this (laughs) like since it's a prank in the first place you could have all kinds of ridiculous instructions and people would just kind of be going along with it like wow this is weird but okay (laughs) they want me to spit and pee in the same bag (laughs) yeah it's in a bag like something that's very hard to like you have to just tie it somehow oh but okay so then that person sends it in and we've got this whatever sample. We completely ignore that. And then in response to them, we send, I don't know, maybe the person that bought it in the first place could like submit what they want the results for their friend to get as. Or it could just be like everyone that uses this service is like a descendant of Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> Something. So what they could do is say I'm the pranker. Uh-huh. And I'm, but uh, this gives you a chance to prank two people. So I could send you a bag that says "spit and pee in this," and then for the shipping label, I could have it be shipped to somebody else that's just like another <laughs> friend that says it's from you. <laughs> so, so like uh, maybe like a guy named Adam, would be like Paul just sent me a bag of his spit and pee. <laughs> well, that's this is this is the other idea is I have so it's like a goofy, funny prank. Ha ha! You're pretending we're you're related to someone you're not or or like we're pretending you're oh, yeah. some race and ethnicity that you're clearly not but on the back end we could also just be very unethically selling <laughs> the dna to whoever <laughs> you know we don't have a reputation to defend yeah the people that are getting this as a gift have no idea of our existence we just like send them a letter like five years later saying congratulations we've successfully cloned you (laughs) yeah your dna has been logged (laughs) we sold it to uh what's the one that the facebook just got in trouble with what is their name oh um something starts with the c yeah man whatever we sold it to those guys (laughs) old news at this point (laughs) but yeah (laughs) oh but i think there's like legitimate cambridge analytica yeah yeah (laughs) <laughs> that's the, the back end we're partnered with Cambridge Channel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Rolling down the list here is Death Notes. Okay. So you have a Twitter account. You create a dedicated Twitter account. What's great about this idea is it really doesn't require almost any development work. But so basically, you would create a second Twitter account that's private. And no one can see the tweets. And then basically there's just like a website and you enter your handle or whatever into it. And then that becomes like your death note Twitter. And so whenever you want to tweet something that like you want to be released upon your death, Mm -hmm. that's where you go. You tweet it on that account and no one can ever see it because you're not following anyone and it's just private. Gotcha. But we as the company that are offering the service... We either have the password or you're following us with that account. 
one way or like the thing where you click and it says like authorize this app to use your yeah Twitter whatever. So one way or another, we have those tweets and no one else does. And then we basically just monitor either you could set it as like if you don't tweet for a solid week, we're going to just assume you're dead and start releasing them. Yeah, or if you don't log into any Twitter accounts in six yeah. months, we'll start releasing your death tweets. Yeah, or just you know a more manual thing we could like watch for obituaries or something. <laughs> that seems less reliable. Yeah. Well, either way. But the point is, just people can kind of put a log of things that they want to be said once they're dead, and they can just kind of easily contribute to it whenever they like, and then it gets slowly released upon their death. Yeah, that's something I would definitely sign up for. Yeah, and what would be cool is you could even like authorize it on your primary Twitter account, so that once you're dead, it really just looks like yeah, that's what you're I would continuing want. to tweet. Yeah. <laughs> like first tweet boom motherfuckers i need to start doing that now or like once i'm approaching death i'm just going to schedule unless something exists but i'm just going to start scheduling tweets and <laughs> different posts and maybe reddit will have scheduled posts like start still racking up That's the karma after is, but dead. you never know when death is going to strike and this is why you need the service to always be at yeah. the ready for you yeah there needs to be a dead man switch built into the system yeah all yeah. right i like that one yeah yeah. And then third third one is less of a of a well formed idea, but I just want a company that's mission statement is to make things simple. Okay. And so my example here is that and I've seen this a lot with like either you get a new app or a new device and there's so many settings, or even when I go to the grocery store, I'm just like, oh my god, like there are seven different brands of seven different yeah. kinds of cookies and then yeah it's just overwhelming and so it's kind of a first world problem but i would really like someone to just step in and say hey if you like like i just want cookies sometimes you know yeah. or like i just want bread <laughs> bread is a really great example because like you can't go very wrong with it i just want to say give me freaking bread like in a video game you know you yeah. go to the general store and like bread is the only kind of bread because yeah. it's just generic so i just i really want a company with the philosophy that's like we eliminate the stress of choice mm -hmm. and it's almost you know it's kind of like a kind of our way or the highway and it's a little bit how apple has been you know yeah. it's just like we have one product or a couple you know very limited product selection that's really well refined if you don't like it, go somewhere else. But if you choose to live kind of like this lifestyle, then this is a company that's built around that. Yeah. I like that a lot. That's like a big thing for me is removing decisions. Yeah. Because like if you go into, I don't know, I work at an advertising agency and we're working on something like a tourism website right now mm -hmm. for a place in the, for one of the states around here. And like... There are hundreds of thousands of events on their website. And I'm just like, guys, like <laughs> this site is completely useless because it's just you you get to the site and it's just paradox of choice. It's just like there's so much on here and half of it is garbage. And it's just like, I don't know. But even at a smaller scale going into a grocery store, like you said, I just want cookies. Yeah. So it'd be cool to even have like. Like, maybe it could be a product that they own, but it could also be, like, a third-party thing like Amazon, where instead of saying, I want this, this, and this, yeah, the exact thing, like, oh, I want um, just cookies, bread, and uh, milk. Well, but you don't get the choice of which one. Yeah, even Amazon has, like, redundant, uh, like, the same exact product listed several times, and yeah. that really frustrates me about that. But, yeah, I just... It would be so cool to just say, so basically it would be like um, TaskRabbit or, or um, Instacart or whatever that delivers your groceries. Yeah. But there's like a middleman between that that just says, hey, oh, yeah. tell us, the even just type, maybe not, not even like have categories and you can be as specific as you want in text. Like just tell us what you want and we will make it happen. And you can technically do that. Like in Postmates, mm -hmm. you can just do a written like milk right yeah and, and then whatever milk they bring you is what you end up with um but you can't get away with that too great because if you know a postmate is kind of expecting the tip you know maybe they're going to buy the more expensive milk yeah and it would, it's really cool if you could just not care about the brand especially and just mix it up with like sometimes you get the 
premium ones. Sometimes you get generic. Mm-hmm. You get like the generic brand of different stores. Yeah, that's my favorite because that could be an actual thing. That's my favorite idea so yeah. far. And <laughs> the task rabbit like way I think would be the best because then you're letting a human decide for you rather than having to rely on some algorithm that's maybe being bought by like oh if you you know pay us a little bit we'll make sure that your thing is the thing that gets bought more often mm. maybe it removes that whole weird layer oh but that could be where the money is yeah in maybe, that maybe that's a good thing to have like uh, on the business owner side but not so much on my side yeah i just I'm, I'm not getting like whatever they recommend i'm just getting whoever paid the most it's basically just like remove the brands i think like i almost would want to call it generic like that would be the name of the yeah. service I have a domain registered for null brand. <laughs> what is that for? <laughs> just for it's for nothing. It's just like a nothing like null is Actually, like empty yeah. just and look, then just brand. give me that. Just give so me that. We can we can use that null <laughs> brand. Actually I like that better than generic. Let's yeah. do it. All We're right. gonna make all four of these. Sounds good. We'll start with the uh <laughs> pee and spit bag <laughs> idea. <laughs> <laughs> or we could we could just keep the DNA and just you know yeah. keep it privately. We'll, yeah, well know. that'll be our April Fool's joke for next year. Is just like a p- swimming pool full of random people. Or, or, <laughs> or like we se- sequence their genome or whatever. Yeah, and then we like we pay for that. We pay the hundred dollars <laughs> or whatever it is, and then we're just like, hey, you can have it if you pay us like two hundred dollars. <laughs> but if you don't pay us two hundred dollars. Then it's going to Cambridge <laughs> yeah, there you go. or whatever. Just holding people's DNA hostage. <laughs> yeah, basically uh, ransom. But then what they do is they pay us $200 and we only use half of it. And then we can go back the next year or the next month and say, hey, we didn't get rid of all of it. Another $200, please, or we're selling it. <laughs> <laughs> the mafia as a corporation. Yeah. <laughs> so this is... Just a quick list that I put together about how my life has suddenly changed dramatically in a very non-dramatic way. But, okay. like, personally, things are different for me. So if the first thing on this list is that Facebook, amongst all their controversies, has recently... So there's Cambridge Analytica thing, but the newer thing is that uh, people were basically scraping... I don't know if you know this... I think I might have told you before, but you no, can... No, I've seen it. I was like, reading about this on Reddit today. Okay, yeah. So you can type in phone numbers, and it'll put the profile associated with that phone number. Yeah. And apparently you can do emails, too. I never did that. Um, but this was a super useful thing for me. I didn't use it like all the time, but if I got a call from someone I didn't know, like first thing, Facebook, type in the phone number. It was like a superpower, especially because people were not aware of yeah. it, right? <laughs> And I just checked today, and that doesn't work anymore. Really? Yeah, so I'm back in the dark. You know, I lost the, the graph search thing that Facebook had a while back. And How often did you <sighs> use that? Because if, if I don't know the number, I don't answer it. I, I pretty much do it every time. Or, like, sometimes, you know, there's been in the past, like, I'm talking with someone on Craigslist, and everyone, like, thinks they're all anonymous, and I'm just like, oh, let's look up this number, and then I know. <laughs> or, like... You know, a few days ago, I used it to find, I'm just working with someone to organize something. And like in an email, she was like, here's my phone number. And I was like, okay, let's just learn everything about you now. Because <laughs> it was enough. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so. I don't think I ever put my phone number into Facebook or my address mm, or anything. I think it might be. I think it might have been like, you need this for verification purposes oh, at some even point. Oh, that? Yeah, if the, if the number is associated, you oh, didn't have man. to like. Well, we'll never know because it's we're past that now. But yeah. actually, I think I'm. I don't remember, but I probably tried it with your number <laughs> when I got it. <laughs> I know I put a. This was like a while ago, and it's kind of dumb. But like, for my address in Facebook, I put like a clown school or something in case anybody <laughs> looked it up. <laughs> but yeah, I don't use Facebook at all oh. anymore. So that that is a a change kind of to me. just like. Yeah, just the way that I go about things. This is like changing my mindset. So that's one thing. Number two is that iOS got an update. We're on 11.3. And so as a result, some other things happened probably. Uh, 
I think like there's more animojis. Oh yeah. Or whatever. I saw that the I, re- I remember when the beta was out, but I I didn't know that it was out now. I need to download that. But the thing that us peasants that don't have iPhone 10 got in this update is a battery health indicator in the yeah. battery section, which is big for me because I have been living in this wonderful ignorant bliss of what health my phone battery was. Mm-hmm. And just like, oh, don't worry about it. It's fine. You're good. Uh-uh. Wow. I know now. And it bothers me. You know, like, if the phone is not fully charged, I like to fully kind of charge it, which is probably contributing to the fact of my battery health. But the point is, like, I want my battery, you know, it's just like, oh, man, this could be better. Right? So now that I can see my battery health, I'm just like, oh, maybe yeah. I should go get this replaced. Cause yeah. I'm, well, but that's kind of what it's for. I mean, so this goes back to app, the whole controversy with Apple mm-hmm. um, slowing down phones when the battery health went low or when the battery health was low because otherwise your phone would just shut off at like 40%. Yeah. Um, which is a valid solution, but the controversy comes in because everybody's ready to attack them for like trying to force people to update their phones, which this is a valid concern, but is telling people like, this is why your phone is slower. You don't actually need a new phone. You just need a new battery. Your battery is in perfect yeah, health until yeah. Apple actually tells you, oh, no, Exactly, you're yes. I was just, health. I was so happy just thinking like, oh, I'm sure it's fine. I just didn't think about it. And now I know. And you know what the number is? I'm at 88%. Well, that's not that bad. I don't even know how bad that is. But it's like more than a tenth of my battery, right? Yeah. But I would expect it. I would have expected it to be lower. Um, I'm not, I haven't updated yet. I didn't know that it was out. I, I'm curious on what mine is though, because I have the iPhone 10, which isn't that old. I would like to see like, what's the sliding scale yeah. look like for I, battery. I think on, I think at 80% is when Apple will replace it for free, which is probably when it's like bad. And I think it's something around 80% when like Tesla's consider their batteries to be too like to the, to the certain point. There's some cutoff. It's sort of arbitrary, but I think it's something like 80 for both of these yeah. companies. Uh, I can't wait for a big battery technology breakthrough. Yeah, well, uh, we will see. But I, I just wish they worked. They seem like the most magical of technologies. Batteries? Yeah, just like yeah. You, you can't charge it, you know, you can't leave it charging or else it'll overcharge and like the battery, mm-hmm. you got to cycle it and it's like, it's as if there's some kind of magic like voodoo thing that i don't understand about how batteries work and it has been improved a ton so if you think about like i don't know 10 years ago when people were using like nokia's yeah those lasted a day and that was just a little you know single like that was basically using no power and now we have basically full Mm, computers that can run like full-scale games and still last you all day I have a thing though. I like. I kind of feel like the companies that create these things are incentivized to, for both computer power and for for like just power, like battery power. Mm-hmm. They are sort of like, oh, we have two days worth of battery. What can we put in this phone that yeah. we can power such like so that now it only has one day of battery again. Yeah. And if they have more power, they're like, oh, cool. We could just have it run really fast. They're like, well, we could have it do more things and so you end up in the same place but just with more capabilities i don't know it's weird right. yeah but yeah, with the tesla cars it's just that's where mostly my understanding of all the weirdness comes out like like if it's below a certain temperature you can't use like the acceleration thing like the really fast and like how long do those batteries last so you said 80 percent is what they consider low health i think is so. that like happening in a year or is that happening in like 10 years or five years ah <sighs> This is like a big question that like, cause I'm like a big like pro Tesla person. I'm wearing a Tesla shirt right now. Yeah. Uh, and people keep asking me this and I looked it up once and I forget all the time. I know it's not a huge deal. I think it ends up being fine. I forget if Tesla like has, has a warranty. I don't uh, know if this is still even a thing, but do you remember something like, it's basically a platform that you drive onto and it lowers an old battery out and puts a new battery in for like 
instead of charging your Tesla, you can basically yeah. just replace the battery with a full one, and then it charges that one and gives it to the next person. Is that... Am I rem- misremembering something? No, I think that was considered... That's kind of when I jumped on, and I have memories of this big technology, too. Yeah. And I don't think it ever came to flourish, and I think they, they just... Maybe it's down the road, but I think they kind of got away from it. Because I thought that solved a few things, not only not having to wait for your battery to charge, but also just, like, you know, the whole battery health thing. Like, if they could make it, you know reuse these batteries as much as possible yeah i I think it's a good potential thing i can't so officially my next car will be a tesla because i'm selling my car and i'm moving to seattle so here in a few (laughs) years when i need a car again i'll be a good i'll be doing well enough to uh buy a tesla because they'll be in full production oh yeah or or bankrupt no bank whopped (laughs) <laughs> that would never happen. <laughs> they're coming uh, out with a. So sad. They're coming out with a, a tequila, Tesla tequila. Did you see? Oh that? yeah, I saw yeah, that. I saw that. That's funny. It. Or I think it was, I saw it on Instagram. But yeah. I did, is that a real thing? I thought that was just like a marketing uh, thing. I, I think they're probably gonna really sell it at some point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, he's been getting um, like creative with his marketing flamethrowers, and he's got now this tequila with yeah. like. <laughs> just having fun with just it. Just finding a way to fund it no matter how, how you can do it. I don't think they really like need it. They're just like, it's great for the end. Promotes the brands and like they get a bunch of money. All right, I'm going to keep rolling down my list here. So with this update also came at least at first and possibly just because it was a restart of the whole system and like a fresh upgrade, less latency on my phone. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was, like, noticeable. And that's, like, usually when I go from an old iPhone to getting a new one, it is because slowly the latency has gotten so bad that I... It finally, like, dawns on me how bad it is, and I have to go, like, get a new one. Did... So, in iOS 11, I'm pretty sure is when they moved everything to the Apple file system, right? APFS... I think so. I don't know. Was that on the SE too? Like, what do you think is contributing to the lower latency? This is, I just think it's back to this thing where they try to push the technology as much as they can. Okay. And this is where, you know, Apple says like, oh, your phone is slower, not because we're slowing it down, but because we have to use the battery differently, you know. Gotcha. There's a, there's, this is where battery technology is magical. I don't know. But you end up with kind of a slower interface, and like, man, I wish, I wish that someone prioritized that like above all things, because even, like, like do something on your phone. I bet there, even on the shiny new, ten, there's probably, not nothing, in way of latency. Um, it's kind of hard to tell because you get that like, yeah, like the motion blur kind of thing. Well, because, like, you can't even. You know, when I click the home button, I can just kind of count, like, oh, how long has it been since I pressed it and, until I can then use the screen again. But with the swipe up gesture, it doesn't, oh, yeah. you know. It moves pretty much with my thumb as I go up, as, like, as far as I can tell. Not so much, like, latency with things oh, following. Oh, you mean just, like, just, it's yeah, not, you can't know. actually use it. Just slowness of the phone. So, like, okay. so I turned off... Um, I, like I turned on reduce motion and accessibility just because I do that sometimes just to alternate. I don't know. Uh, and like, like just right. It's like, it's definitely not instant. Yeah. They used to do a thing. So where like, if you opened a folder, you couldn't immediately tap on an icon. That would drive me nuts. Like oh the, yeah. It would just not be responsive for a split yeah. second until the, window fully open but they've since fixed that but i think i know what you're talking about like stuff like that well just yeah just and it builds up over time it gets a little bit slower a little bit slower and it's like it is mentally taxing in a way that you don't notice until it's just really slow yeah uh, and then it, you use somebody else's phone or something and then you're like, like oh wow this is way yeah. different and it's just it's so great like some of the older <laughs> technology that was simple didn't have that like how long does it take to change a channel on a tv now because of digital like at least like a whole second that you can count out you know like you mean with a regular remote yeah just the remote and hit channel and it's going to go 
up one, and it's going to take something like oh, a second yeah. from picture to picture. Yeah. Good old analog days. Instant, you know, just from turning the dial. Uh, and, yeah, like paper and pen, you know, you don't have latency like with an iPad and a, and a pencil, which is not too bad, but, like, there's there's something really nice about having imperceptible lag. Yeah. It's getting a lot closer, though. Uh, I don't know. I really feel like it's not like given enough importance. Yeah. Because I think it's just it's people like think of the phones as themselves in a way. You know, it's really like a part of you, yeah. and then like a part of you is now on like subconsciously underperforming, and I just okay. I just think it's like taxing on your on your mental state almost. Yeah. Uh, so I find that frustrating, and like these good old things, that there's just it's nice. It's nice when things work as expected. You know, it's, it's even like just physics. You're expecting this thing to do this thing, like a pencil when you draw with it. Yeah. Obviously, it's just gonna. Keep... I, think, I think there's like a transition between like now di- digital is a new thing. We need to make everything seem digital. We need to make it seem like it's doing something. It needs to go back to like, okay, we don't like digital's not like a cool new thing. We now want things to be be seem like it's not digital. We want it to seem like I'm actually moving this or I'm actually writing this and I'm not interacting with the computer. Yeah. And I think probably your Apple Watch is has a latency. Yeah, this is the like it, right? original yeah. Apple Watch and it's it's definitely slow. It's just, yeah, it's so frustrating. Because if you have something like a seamless interface, it's so great. And like when when you go to really simple websites that are just like ghetto HTML looking things, uh, it loads so fast. And you're you're just like, so this is a different kind of problem because it's a limited bandwidth. Yeah. But this is a thing too where they see like, oh, this is how much bandwidth the average person has. And, you know, we can push it, you know, like they can wait a second for things to load. So we'll put all these things on our website. But if you go to some of these super low, you know, it's just text on a page. Right. It loads so quickly and it's such a great experience. It's so much better to not like just that little wait time, you know. I think like processing power and battery are both things that we're like always right on the edge of as far as like what we want to do. Like we need like a like what's it called we need like a like a factor of 10 times better than what we're able to use so that we can actually just do what's cool instead of having to say like you know oh this is fast this way but we can do all these cool things and we'll we won't cut off the cool thing list until it gets to like almost too slow. Yeah. Or the battery is almost not lasting long enough. It's just like only up until we can do whatever we want literally. And you know, the amount of processing power that we have avail- available to us is like so crazy high that it doesn't even matter. Yeah. I would really like to see a company specifically say that they prioritize just battery life and not having latency or, yeah. or or low latency and just you know whatever features we can do with that like there used to not be latency on like commodore 64s maybe probably i don't actually know but you know no. that interface is pretty in depth right like could you could you not put like a 10 year old operating system basically like what, what if we yeah. were running ios 1 on the modern iphone what would that be like yeah It'd be amazing, and I, I kind of wish that I could take a few steps back sometimes just yeah. for that. And it's not even impossible to do. It's just, like, more time. So, like, say we're developing a cool, like, some web page that has some big interactive feature, like, HTML and CSS is advanced enough that makes a lot of that stuff possible, but, like, there people are still using JavaScript in places they don't need to be using JavaScript, which is a lot slower. There are because it needs to be like compiled in some way, or people are using plugins or add-ons that other pe- other people was built because it's a time saver. Mm-hmm. But it's also got these ten other features built into it that you don't need, but you still have to like pay for that processing power when you're using the one feature that you do need. So it would be nice if 
like Apple, I guess, tries to do that. But I wish it was like more of a priority just across development and across the internet of like, you know, designing something and building it in a way that's like also meant to be fast and not just to like solve the creative problem. Yeah, I think what's good is we're heading in a direction where between virtual reality type things and uh, possible like neural interfaces, you do need to care about latency and it is going to matter because the whole point of the VR is, you know, like a realism and immersive thing. And then I doubt that you want a laggy brain computer interface. Yeah. So hopefully we're going to improve on that here.